Hi, I'm Ruth Genevieve with Behind the Set at Fairfax Public Access, where I had the opportunity to interview Lucifer Graves from Lucifuge Radio. Thank you for having me. I'm prepared for him there. No. Sorry, yeah. Let me go Jesse Leader, my full name. My real name. Yeah. So are we pretending that we're on the air? For right now. Yeah. Right, oh, sure. so None of this is worth it. I know, on. but should it be? Well, well these, these are, well, I can turn them off. Yeah, let's make it look, look, look level. Like, yeah, looks like it was. Mike wants all the way up. Put it down, Mike. Screwed all the way up. Put it down. Yeah, so at least it's, it's, yeah, that's it looks cool. like we're doing something. Yeah. Can okay. you change the mode? This? Mm-hmm. No, I'll just this. You can bother to fly. So I mean, I got your headphone way down. That's done. Stick it way down. That's done. You're not typing. <laughs> so, kick back and relax. This is Molly Crew. Shout at the devil. So, are you going to do an intro or are you going to open up with Oh, can I bring someone? We can do an intro. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Say something like, you know, welcome to Behind the Scenes. By the way, I think, we're all, I think we're all rolling. So, um, just so you know. Yeah, I started. Uh, I see red lights on these other cameras. So this is, a, this is just a trial run, right? Trial run. Yeah. Right now. Don't want to be crew. Do you need to be <laughs> got Van Halen at six a.m. Oh, oh great. Meet Love and they're Kiss. Also all nice. Having, they all have internal mics. I grew up listening to Van okay. Halen, man. I love Van Halen. Actually, <coughs> five mics for me. Great. Benedict Cumberbatch. So we gotta get sound. Okay, let's go. Whatever you want. Stuff. Oh, okay, yeah, we ready? You ready again? Do we want yep. this? And we want this? No, I don't want that. Wait for her to put that down and start acting like we're wrong. Now, if we're on, we're on should maybe you have headsets on. Ooh, what do you think? Is there a head, headset? Hey. Can we hear your speaker here? I hear you, Claude, and clear. Two weeks ago, it's currently playing. Not touch nothing. Greetings, my fellow senators. Oh, wow. Welcome. This is what it's also what an evergreen is. Host, Christopher Graves. Did, did, does anybody really notice that? that? Well, no, but you're playing the previous show from like two I weeks ago? No, why not? This is a production of Radio Evergreen. No, why not? not. That's back for you. That's the good thing with Evergreens. They gave a producer show two weeks ago. And it was still in. Turn the monitor down a little. Comcast Channel 27. Pleasure to talk to you. So I, would, I mean, yeah, I, I, personally, I'll be able to tell what's the, by the first song when the show is produced. Wow. Yeah, wow. so let's give it a second here and see what we hear. This is last week's show. Last you got, you got show. a you got a good on-air voice. <laughs> there's, a, there's a persona there. It's, it's it's pretty good. Suits the material. A real quick talk about everything. All right. All right, you ready? What is Evergreen? Evergreen is when you produce a, a radio show, you record it on a CD, you turn it into a radio shot with the programming director for the FBA. And Evergreen basically means that, say you've got a flat tire, you're mm-hmm. running late, you're not feeling well, you can't make it. And Evergreen is a show that will automatically play, thus automation, will automatically play whether you hear or not. So tonight, I mean, I, I could be, you know, going to get a pizza right now, I'm all, all my shows on. I'm not even here. Oh, wow. So I, I would definitely recommend anyone 
wants to be involved with radio, as many evergreens as you possibly can. You should never ever know what's important for you. And first things first, if you're really looking for and you want to be a student at you know, Radio Fairfax or a certain radio show on the air, rule number one, this little blue light right here, it's called automation. You never turn off automation. You turn off automation, you shut down the entire radio station. And that can cause a lot of trouble. So that's a scary button. <laughs> yes, yes. What I've heard, it can take up to three days to get it to come back up. So what you do if you want to get your radio show up and running is you watch that time clock right above there. And when your time slot comes available, you go in the game on automation, you play a PSA, public service announcement, or your station ID. Start your music on CD one, two, or three. There are three CD players right here. And what you do, once your opening song is playing, you bring the game of your CD down to where it's like, you can hear it, you can still hear it. But then when you click on mic number one, you talk into it to make the opening for your show. And once your show is up and running, smooth sailing from there. Do you know the timing? A lot of it is about timing because when the CD player, they count, they don't come forward like normal CD players, they count down. That's the put on track number two. It's not going to start at one second, it's going to start at the very end and count its way down to the very end of the song. So, what you do when you're ready to switch to the next CD, you make sure you keep an eye on numbers and you make sure you get your, uh, right here, people left to switch to the song, that. Make sure your IDs, your uh, PSAs, stuff like that are ready to roll. Uh, what I always do, the song has nine seconds left, I hit the station ID, because most, most station IDs are nine seconds, right? That way you can slowly lead your way into the next song, and when you're into the next song, all you gotta do is press the next CD player. One thing people don't understand, this is where I kind of got a bad score on my test. There's a button for a wave card, which is this here, for your IDs and the PSAs, right? However, there's no button on this board Get to play. You can turn the game up for the volume. There's no button on this entire console that will press play for one of these little NPCs or uh, PSAs. You have to literally the hand touch or the mouse right here. Now, for the microphone, the best way to keep your microphone. Some people will have it like right in front of them. You get a lot of a lot of wind drag. You want to keep it at the corner of your mouth, right about here. That you're speaking outward, but you're not getting the immense draft coming out as you breathe. So now, when you're ready to close out your show, I want let's, let's actually go back a bit. I usually, about halfway through my show, take a halfway point break, which is about two minutes of IDs and PSAs, so I can get the next CDs and stuff ready. Right. So once you come back from that, you want to keep your music probably at about 56 minutes. Which you should have 58 minutes. You want to keep your music at 56 minutes. That way you have time for IDs for not only nine seconds or a PSA for 30, you can run a few of those in your show as well. Now, um, you always kind of have to have your same spiel as you did when you start the show. Except, you instead of saying, welcome to the show, yada yada, I'll play this really beautiful piano song that's actually done by a Swedish thrash metal band. And I would say, until next time, my fellow minions, I wish you happy hauntings and keep supporting metal. <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Yeah. These three first, first, the first four here are microphones. Okay, we have four microphones here in the studio. These four control the microphone. This one here controls the wave part, the PSA, and the station ID. There's the deadly blue button. Don't all touch it. Don't touch it. No, I'll touch that button. Don't touch that button. Next one, we got CD one, two, and three. CD one, two, and three. Now you can. Some people give people less radio really class. People can reach over. Oh, I gotta switch this song. No, no, just click, click, click. That's all you gotta do. The whole CD player right here is controlled by CD one, two, and three. Next up, we have iPod one. If people want to bring in their iPods or iPhones, whatever. Next one, utility PC. Is that right there? You can bring up other form, other uh, station IDs and whatnot with like that. The last one is utility PC two, which. Whatever. Um, now, one thing people always have to have to do is when you're coming to your radio show, always press the number. See what says program over here? Yeah. You press number one. You don't hold it down. So if you're coming in, you just hit that. 
It resets all the settings of the producer before you to change, make the board back to where it should be. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of the stuff, to be honest with you, no one's ever going to touch. Here's your studio volume, your headphone volume. I mean, really, that's the gist of it, you know? A lot of this, like, this stuff, I think you're not going to touch. Just something before we set it before the live. Wait, wait. Before you leave? More like, you know. Uh, that's why every time anyone comes in for a radio show, you've got to be set before you have it. Um, if you don't, what's basically what's going to happen, if you don't set the board, you're at the mercy of your pre previous producer settings. Now, if he does something up here to make a CD do something else or whatever it is, that could also mess your show up with that. Because you're not used to those settings, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let me show you this over here. Now, since you're close up, this is way part. As you can see, we have all these, uh, these promos for other people's radio shows right here, right? This is where I did switch the thing for that the station I do. Now, I'm not going to play any because we're, you know, we've got the board going. But here's your play, your pause, and your eject. What you do if you want to play them in, in a set line, right? A set list, you'll press play on the first one and pause on the remaining ones, right? Then when this one that you press played on is done playing, the rest of these will just kick up as it's their turn. So. Let me show you a little bit here. We have station IDs. We have PSAs. We have holiday promos. We have break packages. Here's a PSA. I love these things. My favorite has to be, where is it? It is, uh, oh, I'm not seeing it on here. We used to have one on here for the American veterans saying thank you for your service. And that was always my favorite one to play, but I'm not finding it on here now. Um, this here, let me show you that. This is very, very, very important if you're going to do radio. This is called Spinatron. Okay, and the Spinatron, if you're going to play copyrighted music on this station, you have to log it into Spinatron. That way, people at FPA know who who and what record label to pay for you playing that song on the radio. So that's why everybody, you know, you've got to log your music because if you don't, you get a lot of trouble. And uh, back. Yeah, Oh yes, oh yes, they, they pay the royalties, they pay the royalties, any song that I've ever played on here, it has to be logged in the Spinatron, because that's how they can tell, oh Jesse plays some Demir board here, we gotta pay that, we gotta pay that record with. So yeah, it, it, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting, it really is. Um, Are there any limits on how much of that you can play? There's no limits on how much you can play. The main limit that they want you to really keep all the right grasp on, no profanity of any kind. You can play any kind of music you want, but no profanity. I mean, I, I mean I've played black metal on my show, but you know, as long as there's no profanity, it's okay. So back here, Rose, I want to show you this. These are the CD burners. You stuck? There you go. These are the CD burners. Tascam. Tascam is decent. So what you do, Tascam, when it loaded for a second, no disc. You take a burnable disc, pop it in each of these. Here's the tricky part. A lot of people don't get this, okay? Say you put your disc in there, your blank disc, and it's ready to roll, okay? So you press record. You press record before you do anything else because with these, in order to really get it to start recording, you have to press record, wait, then hit play. So what I do when I bring down automation, uh, I have, I've already have a uh, press record, but about a minute before, bring down automation, hit play, play, station ID, and we're the mission. Yep, simple as that. Wow. Yeah. And do you guys ever use the record players? Believe it or not, I wanted to learn <laughs> that in class. I do collect records, mm -hmm. but we never got the opportunity to learn those, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd love to do it though. I love, but Vinyl sounds so much better than the CD any day. Any day. Well, what do you think? That's Radio That's Fairfax. That's awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm glad you were here with me. What inspired you to, get, to do a radio show? I wanted to do a radio show because I wanted to bring my style of music to a community where basically nowadays my kind of music doesn't even exist on top, on top 40 radio anymore. You know, you never hear good metal on top 40 radio anymore. What kind of music are you referring to? All kinds of heavy metal and punk. Everything from the Ramones to Demon Borgir. Greetings, my fellow sinners. Welcome to Lucifuge Radio. I am your host, Lucifer Graves. We've got a great lineup for you tonight, one that I hope you'll truly enjoy. 
Let's kick it into high gear. This is a production of Radio Fairfax, Fairfax, Virginia. Cablecast on Cox and Verizon Fires, Channel 37. Comcast Channel 27 in Reston, Virginia, and worldwide at RadioFairfax.org. So sit back, relax, turn the volume up to 11 and bust off the knobs, because Loose the Fuse Radio is on the air. How did you get involved with Fairfax? I started up here at Fairfax Public Access because I just wanted to take a look. I went through the orientation process. I took the studio camera class, which is the prerequisite for everything up here. And from being up here at the station, I saw Radio Fairfax and decided that I really, really wanted to be in radio. What process did you take? Like I said, I started with studio camera, and I was just you know, learning how to operate the big cameras in the studios. Um, I've taken a producer's workshop, which is television production. Uh, and then I took the radio production class, which is what got me into being a radio DJ. Can you DJ? I have a question. How many songs do you pick for an hour? It really all depends because it's on time. Everything really depends on the time for the show. I could pick uh, you know, 12 three minute songs, I could pick eight 10 minute songs. Just, it's just that you have to really watch the time. I try to generally keep it around 45 to 50 minutes. That way I can add station IDs, uh, PSAs, promos, etc., like that. But I generally try to keep the music around 50 to 52 minutes. What are station IDs? Station IDs are when you listen to the radio and you'll hear, for example, Radio Fairfax. You'll hear them say, This is Radio Fairfax, that's station ID. It's basically identifying the station, letting you know what you're listening to. Right, yeah. So, why did you choose to become a radio producer? Well, I kind of got sick and tired of hearing the same stuff on public on the commercial radio, and none of my music ever gets played. So, I decided I wanted to be a radio DJ to bring some of my bands out to the open and let people hear what my kind of music sounds like. How can you learn to be a radio DJ? Have you ever thought of trying to get a career in this position? Absolutely. My ultimate goal was to work for iHeart. That's my ultimate goal. But I started to hear, <clears throat> and I, I love it here. I love producing the shows week after week. I love playing good music that never gets airtime anywhere else. So this is definitely where I'm going to stay for quite a while. But the ultimate goal is iHeart. Do you need any sort of qualifications to work for iHeart? Yes, we, most of the time you need a master's degree you know, or some kind of degree in radio production or uh, communication, stuff like that. Because you're not just going to hire some guy just off the street. You know, they want some kind of qualification to prove you can operate your equipment, that you know what you're doing, etc. like that. So, can you explain how you are different from the other commercial stations that you hear each day? Of course. <clears throat> My show is based on metal that never gets airtime anywhere else. You're not going to hear my kind of music on any of these local stations, which is what I pride myself on, because when people listen to my show, not only are they going to hear good metal, but they're going to hear something they've never heard before. What kind of metal do you uh, normally listen to? Or music pitch? <laughs> I normally play everything from 80s glam to Norwegian black metal. It all depends. Sometimes I'll have a show where you know, I'll have one black metal song and some glam and some death metal. But then there's some times where it's all death metal and all black metal. So it all really just depends. What I noticed, my show's on Friday nights. And I noticed by Thursday, it's okay, well, this is how my week has been. So let's try and find some music to match that, right? Sometimes it could be all crazy black metal. And then sometimes it won't be. So the good thing is you're not having songs repeat like you no. hear over and over and over I again. I try not to. I try not to. It's, it's, it's hard because you get these good songs in your head and you say, oh, I can put that on the show. Or, oh, wait, I played that three weeks ago. You know what I mean? Do you ever find independent music? Is that yeah, I, I, not here in Fairfax County. I have friends throughout the nation that listen to Lucid Feeds Radio. And they're always contacting me saying, oh, hey, can you play some of our music on your show? And I told them, you know, if you have a label, I need to know the name of your label for a royalty, stuff like that. Um, but other than that, send it to me. Send, I would gladly, gladly play it. So have you thought of bicycling your radio show? And can, for those who do not know, can you explain to them what bicycling means? Of course. Bicycling is when you take your show and you produce, like for example, up here at Fairfax Public Access, to bicycle the show out would mean to take the show I produce here and send it out to other stations throughout the nation, etc., to uh, 
play your show on their station. That's bison. And I've definitely thought about it, and I have friends that just go out the nation to listen to the show, and they're always telling me, hey, you know, we have the station out here, like, please send us your stuff. What stations would bicycle radio? More than likely, it'd probably be another a public access station or an independent independent radio station, like some that we have around here. Um, most of the time, though, it would it would be another public access station. Do you know of any? My friend out in Illinois, he told me one. I can't think of the name of it right now, but he he's a good one. He told me it's that I did the only metal show on the station, so I might as well do it. Wow. Yeah. Wow, well, you can hear. Mm. Have you ever been thinking about hosting local bands? Like have them come on to the show or you go and DJ for them? Of course, absolutely. Um, I tell people from, you know, I said throughout the nation that will listen to the show that hey, if you're ever in the area, bring your band, bring all your equipment, and we're gonna definitely film you or we're gonna bring you into the studio and we'll we'll make it happen. So how did you get involved with metal music? Oh, let me tell you. I've been a metalhead my entire life. Time I was maybe three years old, I remember watching heavy metal videos on TV, and I just knew that this is the kind of music that appealed to me. Uh, nothing else has ever appealed to me like metal. And you know, I got involved in metal because I had an uncle, or still have him, who had a crazy friend that would always give me tapes, cassette tapes. And he one day he walks up to me and he hands me this metal tape, a little mixtape. That's when I became hooked on like the darker metal. I started watching the, the stuff that was on TV. I just, after a while, I knew something over it. So how did you come up with your name, Lucifer Graves? Well, it's a funny story. Actually, uh, I was 14 years old, and I was at a school Halloween party, and I was going to put some costume on. They told me, here, put this makeup on you. Let's see what you got. And I put, at 14 years old, coarse paint, black and white paint all over my face. And they said, you should come up with a name for this guy. So my name is Lucifer Graves. The ah. name stuck. Name just stuck. I've been loose for graves since 1994. So how do you plan on promoting this show? Most of my promoting is done through social media. And you know, I'll definitely keep up with my page, the Lucifer for Graves page on Facebook. And I just will keep people informed as to you know how the sh what shows are going to be on this week. And after the show, I'll, I'll put out a little list of what I play. And you know, it's kind of pretty much how I network to get out there and let people realize, hey, this guy's got a pretty cool show. Let's check it out. Find Lucifuge Radio on Cox and Verizon Fios Channel 37, Comcast Channel 27 in Reston, Virginia, and worldwide at RadioFairfax.org. I didn't have any mentors. Sorry. We didn't have any mentors. Well, I mean, once you finish radio production class, you have the option of either uh, working with a tutor, not with a tutor, an instructor, or you can do like I did and just write yourself out there. My first season was garbage. I threw myself out there because I wanted just to work hard. Like, now I'm a season three and people are tuning in left and right, so it just takes time. You can either work with an instructor and learn further, or you can just throw yourself out there and just, you know, learn from your mistakes. Okay. Yep. Do you have any questions back there? Oh. I'm trying to think. Um, hold on. Lucifer G. Talk about the history of that. But it's, uh, it's got a history that goes farther back, right? It's, it's oh, just like yeah. an ancient. Uh, a ancient uh, Italian um, Latin word. Okay. Ancient Latin word. Ancient Latin word. Yeah, but it means he who flees the light. Uh, this is my show, it's all <laughs> dark metal. The light. That's perfect. You yeah. can please the light. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. If you've ever heard my show, you'll know why I chose this How long have you lived in the DMV area? Whole life. Is that right? Whole life. I've lived yeah. here all 38 years. Yep. But in all that time, there really hasn't been another heavy metal show weekly that you could listen to weekly. None, none that I can recall. No. They, I mean, they would do it occasionally on HFS, right. but that's the only other place I think they might have done it. Yeah. Uh, as long as I've lived, there's been no real good metal show. Yeah. Nothing. Um, that's why when I come in every week, I just make sure I can put my stuff. People listen to it say, awesome. Absolutely awesome. You're a heavy metal pioneer in the DMV. Oh, yeah. That sounds good. I like that. I like that. <laughs> well, good. you know, it's, uh, I mean, the local music system here is, uh, music scene is pretty, uh, 
Dolphin. Pretty active. Well, no, I mean, uh, you know, for, you know, I mean, uh, in this kind of market, there's a lot of different kinds of music. I don't know. I don't know of any heavy metal bands from Northern Virginia, but I, I imagine you probably got some around Baltimore. I would think. I knew I knew one band from Silver Spring. They're pretty good. Mm. But it wasn't to me. It just wasn't real metal. Yeah, they were a good band. They're bands. Great, that, great bunch of guys. Yeah, they're bands that break into metal, but they don't do metal. It's right. not there. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah, I remember the eighties. Trust me. <laughs> Interesting. Oh yeah. That's all I got. All you got. All right, and I guess we're good. Good deal. Yeah. So it's seven to ten now. And yeah, this camera's got a great view of the. They still have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight o'clock. Yep. Soundboard too. If you wish to get a, take some shots of him. Yeah. Did, did, did you want me to do this? This is a perfect spiel, angle for so you. Go in there and have music playing while I do this. Yeah, do the intro here. That. But that. I gotta get up. Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. I wish I could catch my breath. It's a long spiel. Let me know when you're ready. The main, the um, thing at the front, remember you showed me? Oh, it's the manual? Oh, okay. Yeah, the right. manual. Do you want me to look at the camera I'm saying this and look at the, like I normally do at the board? The board like I normally do, make it look natural? Yeah, Got it. Just let me know when you're ready, guys. All right, we're set. You go okay? Yep. Greetings, my fellow senators. Welcome to Lucifuge Radio. I am your host, Lucifer Graves. We've got a great lineup for you tonight, one that I hope you'll truly enjoy. Let's kick it into high gear. This is a production of Radio Fairfax in Fairfax, Virginia. Cablecast on Cox and Verizon Fires, channel 37. Comcast channel 27 in Reston, Virginia, and worldwide at RadioFairfax.org. So sit back, relax, turn volume up to 11 and bust off the knobs, because Loose the Fuge Radio is on. Sounds like you got to memorize. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs>